this podcast, I wanted to give information on writing your progress report. Um, in the past, we've required two progress reports and a final report, uh, but we found that uh, this was a little bit too much uh, for writing. Uh, however, we wanted to make sure that you'll be able to uh, deliver a good progress report and that you understand the contents that are required uh, in there. If you go to the class website, you'll see that I have a template for the progress report and uh, the same template will be used for the final report. There are items in the template that uh, will be filled in as you make progress. Uh, and uh, what I wanted to do here is I will pull up uh, an old report written by one of the former students uh, and go through the um, uh, various uh, uh, parts of the report uh, and make comments that can be useful uh, while you're preparing your report this weekend. So let me pull it up on the screen here uh, so you can see. Uh, this progress, this report was uh, uh, written by a student. His name is uh, Ryan Menefi. And uh, obviously it has the title over here. And then uh, you get a grade out of 30. Uh, if you go down the report, uh, you'll see that uh, I have items that need to be filled in and uh, some of these items will be um, pretty much finished in the first four weeks and then others will need to be finalized as you move on week by, be by week. So it's important to just make incremental progress uh, while you're at it right now. So if you can see that we need an abstract, list of symbols, introduction, uh, load analysis, engine assumptions and operating loads, uh, beam theory analysis, geometric modeling, and CAD. So up to the number seven, uh, you would uh, have most of this information available by uh, this weekend. Uh, after that, from seven on, then you will get into uh, next week finite element analysis, and then further you will do design optimization, and then the most important part is what you learn in this class uh, would be uh, a process by which you evaluate the lifetime based on a finite element uh, and that you introduce in section number nine and finally you get the discussion and the conclusions uh, at the end um, so please use the same template material and uh, as you finish the progress report complete uh, the final report by adding to what you've done in the progress report. Now let's talk about the abstract. The abstract should be um, less than 200 words and it uh, should specify uh, what the connecting rod that you have, uh, what kind of design that you would uh, have it for and the type of uh, engine uh, and uh, the material that is selected for the connecting rod and uh, what uh, will be presented in this report and uh, anything about the conclusions uh, from the report will be here. Then the list of symbols, you notice that they are kind of organized so that you don't have to define them again while you're writing a theory section. And note that uh, we have here the symbol and also the units associated with that symbol. Then next, <clears throat> you see uh, the introduction, and the introduction is a reflection of your writing uh, abilities and writing skills. Some uh, choose to start from a historic perspective, some from a use of perspective, uh, and then uh, some will discuss different types of connecting rods, different arrangements uh, in uh, uh, automotive engines and uh, that is all up to you but uh, it's an introduction to the reader that tells them about the utilization of the connecting rod and then you get into what you will be doing in this report so as you can see here that uh, uh, Menefi uh, wrote down that the analysis uh, will be done first to determine the loads and the connecting rod and then the contact loading due to connecting rods interaction with the crank pin so he defined that and then what he did 
in the report is generate a 3D realization of the connecting rod and a CAD model. Uh, so he mentioned pretty much what the reader is going to see in the report. Uh, next uh, section uh, is, uh, so we finished the, uh, this section, the load analysis. And the load analysis in here is to, uh, to start from uh, an idealization, although here you can see a connecting rod um, depiction of a CAD model, but that's not necessary at this point. What's necessary here is to put in the idealization, as you can see in figure three, the slider crank geometry, the definition of the uh, various geometric quantities, R, G, P, and uh, gamma, and phi, and what these are, and then writing down the geometry equations for RPG, and then writing down the equations of motion uh, to define the um, uh, types of forces uh, from the piston on the connecting rod, from the shaft on the connecting rod, and then the, the, uh, uh, the dynamic forces at the CG of the connecting rod as well. Here he uh, forgot to put in equation numbers sequentially, which is uh, always nice. And then uh, you have the pressure uh, as a function of the uh, crank angle. Uh, that is from uh, the MATPAL, uh, MATLAB file that you uh, downloaded. Uh, next is cal your calculations using MATLAB uh, program uh, of the force phi uh, from the piston on the rod axial and from the shaft on the rod axial and the dynamic force mg uh, double uh, G double dot X axial and you do the same thing for uh, tangential next is the engine assumptions and operating conditions and this is the engine that you have chosen you describe it in detail you describe the uh, uh, type of engine and uh, the uh, size of the engine and uh, uh, the dimensions and any characteristics that you have decided to have and in particular uh, the maximum torque uh, maximum rpm uh, any uh, useful characteristics in general the next section is the beam theory analysis and the beam theory analysis now that you have no you have now um, forces that are defined so if you look in here uh, you see that i have in fact uh, the uh, shaft forces that are defined in here, these two, and then the dynamic forces um, and uh, in, the, in, in here. And uh, finally, you can see also that uh, we have the uh, forces from the uh, uh, piston uh, on the connecting rod itself. So that gives us all of the definition of these types of forces. And we are ready to do the beam analysis as uh, we have the equations and you have the equation you have the moment of inertia for a uh, rectangular cross sections and the stresses that you have and you do your calculations at this point the last section here that i show is the geometric modeling cad and hopefully you've gone to, to that part uh, that's uh, the skills for doing cad models uh, vary and uh, you can uh, present whatever you have done in terms of the CAD model. This is obviously a high skill in uh, CAD, uh, CAD modeling, but uh, you will learn uh, from the, uh, this course how to improve your skills in CAD modeling and a finite element. Uh, in this part here, there, there is not much work yet on the finite element analysis, design optimization, and uh, um, that you can see the uh, Menefi here um, actually left the template material uh, in place. The idea for the template material is to tell you what needs to be filled in. So you should uh, remove it at this point, remove all of what's uh, not done at this point, because there's no need to leave it uh, as I put it in the, t in the template material. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much 
uh, the, uh, this is pretty much actually what we want you to do at this stage and uh, try not to uh, spend uh, an excessive amount of time on the progress report. It is for you to actually put a deadline and the deadline always helps us to uh, finalize a, a project. And this is uh, to impose on ourselves a, uh, a reasonable deadline and uh, learn uh, from the uh, uh, comments that I'm going to give uh, later on. So with that, I'm going to stop.